Okay. This is Marilyn Fontaine from mjfontaine.co.uk, <laughs> unconventional, holistic, and creative coach, and author of the Creative, he- creative Healing Playbook. Today we're interviewing Jennifer Lewis from Pepperstorm. Okay. Okay. In this unconventional pioneer segment, we ask business owners and creative folk five questions based upon the Creative Healing Playbook. And these quest- quest- these questions relate to goal setting, movement, creative practice, morning practice, and relationship with self. So before I begin, I'm asking these questions. I'm now going to ask Jennifer to introduce herself and tell me about her company and why she actually started um, pepperstorm.co.uk. So tell me, Jennifer, how did you start your company? Um, okay. Uh, hello, so my name is Jennifer from pepperstorm.co.uk. Um, I started originally when I was a teenager. That was my first business, um, selling hand-painted T-shirts. Okay. Um, and I went on to work for DJs and clubs and warehouse parties designing backdrops, and it kind of snowballed from there. Um, so I've always been doing art-based work. Um, I actually started my company officially, officially, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You're allowed to make mistakes. <laughs> Officially in 2000. Um, uh, and now I'm working as a, an artist, so a fine artist, a painter and sculptor. Um, I also work to commission and as a freelancer. So I may do work for um, festivals and carnivals. Um, and it can be anything from, you know, small scale printed banners to, you know, like eight, ten foot moving sculptures um well, that was a free part question i don't know what, what was the other bit <laughs> no that's brilliant no that's just important that's the, that's what i wanted to get was a, um, a background of um, your your company uh-huh. and also is it just um do you have any um online items that you have as well as well as the sculptures i mean do you do private commissions? I'm not sure if you said that. Um, yeah, because... I do a lot of private commission work, and that, uh, that's the same. You know, sometimes it may be a portrait, okay. or it may be a piece of sculpture, garden sculpture. Um, sorry, someone's ringing. I'm just going to get rid of them. Hold on. They're gone now. <laughs> yeah. and, and so... Yeah, Go on. it's really important because it, um, you know, because when I'm doing my own work, it's kind of selfishly for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but luckily, people like it, so it's more about what I want to do. So when you have a commission, it stretch, stretches you a little bit because you're trying to keep someone else happy. Yes. And trying yes. to get their personality across it, you know. You're so you're trying to somebody else's vision, trying to bring that to life, really. Okay, so yeah, so it's actually it's challenging you from actually combining somebody else's thought process wants and yeah. desires into your work. Yeah. Excellent. And um, so do you have any other retail items that you have? Um, do you do any, or is it just purely um, commissioned work? Um, no, I do. Uh, when I paint, um, <laughs> I, I print, I, I make limited edition prints and open edition prints for my original. So they're for sale online um, at Alexandra Galleries. Um, if I do shows, I also sell cards, prints and originals. Um, I'm currently working on the pottery collection here in St. Vincent. Okay, wow. So, yeah, that will be for sale. That's really exciting because the pottery industry here in St. Vincent was thriving, you know, years ago with the Caribs and such. Okay. You know, you could practically go and pick up pieces of broken pottery everywhere here. Um, and wow. And National Trust Building, which houses a lot of the ancient pottery, there's some really beautiful pieces. So now we're trying to revive the industry. Um, and right. also we're a very fertile island and there's basically clay everywhere of every colour. So we're using local clays, producing a local product that we want to get out onto the international market. So that's what I'm working on at the moment, one of my main projects. Wow. So you're actually, um, actually supporting yourself by selling um, your um, cards and prints. And also that's given you space and time to actually develop and kind of like a social enterprise isn't it you know, yeah in your country a kind of reviving which is pioneer work anyway isn't it it's a you know it's about actually treading a place where people may have gone before but there's not much people doing it now so you're actually stepping out of the um the norm and creating new avenues yeah so, and also 
Go on, carry on. And then also for this project, because, um, you know, St. Vincent is, it is a very small island in itself. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's it's here to really empower the, the you know some the, the islanders. Um, right. It's the first program that's long term because you do get quite a few arts projects here, but they're like two weeks a month at the most. This is actually over three years, wow. um, and we're, we're hoping to form a co-op at the end of it. Uh, so you know it's it's a serious project, and it's there to you know give the people you know you know empower the people and give them work and have them express themselves and. Yeah, so it's very good. That's amazing. So that is really, you know, it's giving something back, which is really important, but also yeah. satisfying um, something within you, obviously, you know, because you sound really passionate about that. Um, I love it. <laughs> so, because this, this naturally ties into our um, five questions. So with this business career, what goal-setting process do you use, if if any? Um, my my main thing all along is really number one thing is that I'm happy with what I'm doing. Okay. Um, and my goals are set around that. You know, I've been in the position before where I've had a you know a very good job that paid really well. I got the you know had the the apartment, car, lots of travel attached to it, and lots mm. of money. But that wasn't really me. You know, I loved it at the time. You know, now I'm a woman in my forties. <coughs> <40s>, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, my goal now is just to be happy and to produce. You know, I've got a, I've got a gift that I was given, and I just think my my purpose is to share that with people. Brilliant. Um, so my goals are to just, you know, get on with what I want to do, my making, which I love, but also to, I love doing workshops and sharing my skills and exchanging yeah. skills. Um, so my goal setting, you know, like I said, is mainly to keep myself happy. Obviously, you need to make a living, so I need to. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm very professional about my business. Mm-hmm. Um. Um, but my ultimate goal is mm-hmm. to have here in St. Vincent an arts and crafts Okay. Complex. When I say complex, I'm, sp- I'm kind of speaking quite small scale at the moment. So like a couple of um, um, condos, not condos. Yes. Con- what am I saying? Sorry, Marilyn. Condos. Yes, that's right. Condos okay. or complexes. Or- yeah, like a... Yeah. Um, with with a central workshop so people can come and do holidays and now that I've been here doing a pottery I want to tie it in to pottery arts and crafts holidays but aim mainly at pottery so you can come and mm-hmm. it's a real experience to come somewhere you can come and you know find your own clay dig your own clay process it yourself have it fired and when at the end of the whatever time you spend you take it away with you God, that would be really yeah. awesome. And that would be a natural setting. Like, we have some land here, you know, there's where I want to build these. You know, we have coconut trees, we have, mm-hmm. tree, you know, we have lots of natural resources. And it would just be a lovely place to, to work and sketch and make make pieces. Yeah, so that's that's really? kind of my goal. And and so for, to make this goal, I mean, do you do, like, how do you plan it? Do you make a list? Have you Have you done a vision board? Or do you just let it happen without any planning? Um, I wouldn't say I'm a serious planner, but then I guess I am. I just maybe don't do it the conventional way, I guess. Yes. Um, I have done like mood boards and I've done yes. a couple of these. I'm trying to remember what they're called. Workshops where you go and I guess it's like vision planning or, you know, you end up drawing what you want and you do a whole process. Yes where you meditate on it. And that, you know, the first time I did that, it was really amazing because it really showed me clearly that yes. although I hadn't put the ideas on paper, I had them clearly in my head. Yes. And that was that really helped me see that I, you know, because I've always been a bit of a floater and I've always been quite lucky with mm. work. Like work always seems to come to me. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's because although maybe I, in the past I hadn't written it down, I, you know, it was, you know, and I'm a big dreamer. I always dream about things. And I just think that whatever you kind of think of is comes true. Comes true. Yeah, right, brilliant. I'm very much into, you know, if you have a thought and you think about it enough, it's going to happen. And I've been lucky, well, I've been really lucky so far, I think. Um, so I think you do need to set goals, but you don't mm-hmm. always have to do it in the conventional way. I do a lot of brilliant. drawing. Okay, so you are actually putting it down. Yeah, like a lot of free yeah. drawing, like thinking about something and just start doodling from the thought. Yeah. That kind of builds from there. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's excellent. And so, I mean, you're talking about drawing. So, how important is this? Is another. This is the other question. Um, mm. How important is it for you to actually be creative? 
I mean, obviously that's your job, but how, I mean, how do you express the creativity outside of your actual um, artwork and sculpture and clay work? Is there other ways you express your creativity as well? Yeah, I think, well, draw, what well, as a painter, I think people expect you to draw a lot before you paint, and I don't do a lot of planning that way. When I draw, it's more as a tool to, to have clarity on things. So, yeah. You know, I've ended up in St. Vincent under un- unusual, cir- well, not unusual circumstances. My parents are elderly and they need care, so mm. I came. The plan was to yeah. stay for two weeks. I've been here for six months, unplanned. So, yeah, <laughs> been try- yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to work out, you know, how to get along here, because obviously, you know, I was born in London, different society for me, mm. and a whole different way of life. So I kind of worked those things out on paper as well. So I draw... Or yeah. doodle, you know, if I'm thinking I need to be doodling and I do kind of work things out that way. Um, I guess you can, what's the thing, like a flow chart or a diagram, yeah. except it's not a diagram. In it, you like know, a mind map, you're saying. A mind map, yeah. I think if someone looked at it, they really wouldn't understand what it was about, but it's completely clear to me. Well, that's the power of doodling, and I think it's really important that we, we use that, because we, t- we tend not to sometimes. We tend, you know, everything has to have a format, so I think what you're saying is really um, it's really important. Yeah, and um, it, it does help a lot. And also, uh, um, using creativity outside, you know, like I'm trying to be a bit of an organic farmer, not doing that well, but I find that even if I'm, I've been using as art materials, just stuff in mm-hmm. that art that I found, like dry leaves or, you know, anything I find, and that's kind of helped me to get out into nature. Because to be yeah. honest, it's a bit scary for me. I was born in London. I didn't know anything about gardening. And all yeah. of a sudden, I'm in this place where we've got a huge big yard with tropical, you know, it's basically like a jungle at the back of our house, mm-hmm. you know, and trying to get used to that. So I'm trying to slowly pick up bits from there and make art with them and trying to be a bit more comfortable in that really natural environment. Uh, I think different ways it comes across, yeah. Okay, brilliant. And so, because um, this is actually, you're, you're leading on to the questions really well. So do you have a movement exercise regime? For example, yoga, walking, you know, and how is important is this to your well-being? Yeah, I, I, I love to do yoga. I started my yoga classes when I was in London. And when I came here, I found a workshop run by a lovely lady called Camille, who's actually one of the Peace Corps volunteers from America. Wow. So that was really great. I started to go into her class um, on Saturday mornings. And then I also do online courses. There's mm-hmm. some really good online links. Yeah. Um, a couple you've sent me. I think people would just send back and forward to different people. Yeah. So I try, I try to do that at least three times a week when I try. Mm-hmm. And I think that really helps because it just helps to to ground you. It helps emotionally because it helps to just clear you. I find to clear me out if I'm getting stressed yes. about something. Um, obviously, it tones you up re- and really quickly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it really does say, that does your heart good. Um, so, yeah, it's really important for me to do that. And also, it's just time where... Because you can't be stressed and do yoga at the same time. It kind of cancels the stress out whilst you're doing the yeah. yoga and clears your head. And for me, that's really important because I do, well, I'm a bit of a worrier at the moment. Yeah. And I think that time, like that. half an hour, 45 minutes that I do the yoga, I actually don't worry about anything at all. So it's, it's, Brilliant. Yeah, that's it's excellent. Hard. So the next question, do you have a morning practice or ritual? And I think, again, you're leading on to the question. So, you you know, you're flowing nicely with it. So... What do you do in the mornings to get yourself um, prepared for your day? Because, like you said, you you know you care for your parents, and you're also in a different country. So, um, what what is it you do that helps you you know get you through the day? Yeah, I think well, besides the yoga, every morning I just try to just go out out the front door onto the porch and just breathe in some you know nice fresh oh. air. Oh, lovely! Just look at the the yard or the trees or whatever, and just kind of say thank you. You know, because no matter how, and I do get miserable, don't get me wrong. But, you know, just to realise that I'm in a really beautiful place and privileged to be here. You know, yeah. my mum and dad have worked really hard all their lives. We're, you know, we're in a position where we've got a bit of land mm-hmm. you know, that belongs to us, that I want to develop. So just to be thankful, really, and just take a minute before I turn on the laptop, because <laughs> that <laughs> I spend too much time on there. But, yeah, just to be out in nature for a little bit. And just breathe. Brilliant. And the last question, 
How do you nurture your relationship with yourself? Um, with me, the thing I tried to do is just listen to myself a bit more and mm-hmm. not anybody else. Yes. You know, I obviously want to listen. I take advice from friends and stuff, but mm-hmm. just to, my thing is to do my own thing. And as I said before, yes. just to make sure that I'm happy with what I'm doing, you know, yes. um, nurturing myself. Yeah, for me, like, no, no, the yoga is really, mm-hmm. you know, bodily-wise and you know, physically and mentally is really, really props you up and gives you a lot of, well, not a lot of power, but, you know. And also food, very important for me too. Yes. I'm in a position now where I can be eating lots of fruit and veg and, you know, lots of organic, and, you know, stuff. I'm, we've got a lot of fruit trees in our yard and growing some vegetables. Oh, how lovely. So it's just, you know, I have to nurture my body. and yeah, Also, I'm at an age now where there's kind of no turning back, so <laughs> I <have to laughs> take care of myself with food and, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excellent. So, I mean, from what you're saying, you know, to be able to follow your intuition, to be successful, to be a pioneer, requires a lot of um, nurturing of yourself, exercise, good food. So it's kind of really holistic life that you live, actually. So you are like an holist- a, a holistic artist. Oh, in, that's in, all that's as- well. Thank in, you. In, in, you know, in all aspects, because you're actually... I mean, this is the creative pioneer. This is why I wrote the Creative Healing Playbook, because people like yourself is already doing it. But Uh there's other people that will be listening to this that want to get to the stage you're at. And again, in NLP, we have something called modeling. And you have to model, you know, what successful people do. And successful people doesn't just have to be about money. It's about living their, their truth, being in the moment. And these are the things that make you, is when you have all these things in place, um, you know, and I think what you've just said is really, really valuable to people that will be listening to this um, podcast. So um, thank you very much for that because even though it's been a short interview, it's been, you know, you've actually covered a lot and it's an amazing template. So can you just state where you can be reached, um, your website, blog, email address and telephone if you have one and if you're on Skype, if anybody needs to contact you? Yeah, okay, so my website is Pepperstorm, that's P-E-P-P-E-R-S-T-O-R-M dot co dot U-K. My blog is uh, Pepperstorm dot blogspot dot com. Mm -hmm. Um, My uh, number is, oh, what's my number? You can get me on on Skype, it's Louie Pepperstorm, so L-O-U-I-E P-E-P-P-E-R-S-T-O-R-M. Uh, and my number is seven. Uh, depends where you're dialing from, but seven eight four mm-hmm. four five. Really, I have to look the number up. I can't remember what it is, Marilyn. Okay, that's all right. Because I'll put it on the I'll put it on the um, blog post anyway, so people can just contact you directly if they need anything. And also, I'll put a website address and the blog. Everybody, please read the blog. It's really good. It's got some really interesting pictures from St Vincent, and. Um, so again, I hope to have you back. So I'm going to have a hopefully um, a round table with several people. So. Oh, lovely! Would you, would you be able to come back? Of course, I'd love to come back. <laughs> lovely. Okay then. So thank you very much for that, Jennifer. Thank you too. Ex- excellent interview. So I hope you enjoyed the interview with Jennifer Pepperstorm, should we say? And again, I'm going to be interviewing people. Um, I think once a month. So please um, come back, post any comments that you may have, and um, hope to see you again soon. This is Marilyn Fontaine from 